everybody we are on the job so a guy has been uh, trying to do some filming this week doing some all we were doing this week was painting and a guy got to thinking you know watching a video of people painting is about as entertaining as watching paint dry so instead of doing a paint video I figure we'll do a quick walkthrough we're, uh, we're wrapping up on this project for this week we'll be back in next week to do some cabinets we're gonna bring it along on that project but a guy figured he'd show you maybe a couple of tips and tricks and what you know equipment that we use and how we use it and maybe it could help you on your project so this house is like a 90s-esque era follow me I'll show you along the ceiling is continuous goes all the way around the road it was kind of like a 1990s thing they like to do they wouldn't break the rooms off you know, a lot of times houses will have like a, a, a header across here to break the ceiling so that way you can, you know, take a little break when you're doing your ceiling. This one, not so much. So we had about 2.78 acres of ceiling to roll, not once, but twice. That feather went to muscle failure about mm, three times. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He was liking it. Not really. Um, this whole thing started off with is the homeowner obviously hired us to put in these kitchen cabinets that go on this wall. That wall, and we'll bring in the other room here shortly and show you where the other cabinets are going. And then she changed her mind, shocker, and the electrician got involved, and we had to pull down a big chunk of ceiling. After the big chunk of ceiling come down, that just started to snowball going, and next thing you know, we're painting the ceilings, we're painting the walls. So here we are. Uh, that started on Monday. Today is Thursday. We got about 98.2% of the walls complete. So uh, let me show you what we're using over here. So that way, if you get a little project of your own, maybe the wife's been on the Pinterest or your significant other, whatever, you know, you got a little honeydew list you got to do that weekend, you'll have an idea what you got to use. So come on down, let me show you what we're working with. So we'll start off with, you know, the simplest of things, paintbrush, right? Don't cheap out, y'all. You don't have to go big time and spend no 45 bucks this fella right here cost me, I think, maybe $16. Got it at the Home Depot. You can do it. They won't help. And then uh, as far as the brush stiffness goes, it's all about your personal preference. I like it nice and nice and stiff so that way a guy can just lay it in there and get her going. So don't skimp out on the brushes, but you ain't got to go high end. These little guys right here, a little handy cup bucket. You can get the liners that go in there. Just toss them away. It's got a magnet in there for you. So when you're painting along, you just stick a paintbrush in there. Good to go. And then if you want to hold on to your brushes for a little while, get yourself a little bit of brush cleaner. We got ourselves a little tin can here. Throw a little bit of that brush cleaner in there. Mix it around a little bit. Uh, I don't think I have a wire brush out here, but we use a wire brush. That is key. When you're cleaning your paint brushes, wire brush always go with the grain. Against the grains like petting a cat backwards. You just... You don't want to do that. So with the grain, you know, flop her back over and just grind that paint right out of there. Hot water is the best thing too. Just not, don't burn yourself. Oh, uh, let's see, yep, get the can there. Man step or woman step, whatever your flavor. I mean, I don't, there's no discrimination here. Uh, obviously blue tape. We're gonna show you a little trick with this stuff here in a little bit. Little cigar roller. They call it a cigar roller because you know, it looks like a cigar. This guy's handy for getting in little spots like that, you know, where your big nine inch, nine inch roller over here. This guy won't fit. These two, don't skimp out on your roller handles. This guy was like, I don't know, 12, 16 bucks. I mean, smooth action. That's what you're looking for. You don't want something, you know, where you're rolling up the wall and things just to hit the brakes on you, and now you're smearing paint. Oh, it's, it's not a good time. Now, like I was saying, we had about 2.87 acres of ceiling and walls to roll. So we broke out the Big 18. And we call it Big 18 because that's what it is. It's, it's 18 inches. This guy's super handy. Now, not everyone, you know, not all of y'all are going to need this big sucker. But if you have a house like this with the big wide open ceilings, this is going to be your friend. I'm just telling you. And then now, to control that there Big 18, we got this here, you know, Lightsaber hand, you know, I got this one guy, Obi Wan Kenobi. He said he dropped it once. I don't know. Nice paint pole. This works really nice. That way you're not up on the ladder all the time. Also, here's a little tip these little wig rollers, 
they'll screw right in there too. So like when we were cutting in this ceiling, I see I slide the, the man step, or woman step, all over the place. We put my cigar on there, and we just rolled around there because we were painting the wall, so we didn't care that we were crashing down on the walls. That worked out great. A lot less work, you know, time is money, money's time, all that good stuff right there. So that's kind of like the gist of our equipment. One more piece that is a must have is a three legged day maker. You know, this guy right here just turns, yeah, he's okay. He can, he'll 24, 48 hours, so he can be, he'll, he'll see fine. This guy right here is a must have. They do make a two legged version that's more portable, got another handle on it. This thing works great. What you're gonna to wanna to do is say if you're doing drywall or painting, let's say for instance, we're painting this wall right here. I'm gonna set this guy up and shine it right down the alleyway, like so. That way you can really see what's going on. Because if you can make your wall or ceiling look good under this light, you can turn that light off, she's gonna be, be pristine. And that's what we kind of, that's what we achieved to do. So let me show you a couple tricks. Oh, well, at least one trick that we do here with this blue and tape stuff. Now in this house, they got hot water based board heat. These steel radiators, obviously we're not painting them. And when you roll them, believe it or not, I don't have a big roller, but let's, we'll demonstrate here with a little cigar roller. Let me get this guy out. When you got this thing full of paint, you're coming down a wall with it, especially if you get real aggressive, you're gonna start just showering the liquid color is just going to come on down the line. So if your house already has existing baseboard or you got like these metal registers like that, what you want to do is get the blue tape, not the green, not that frog stuff. I've used it all. I'm telling you, find me in the comments. I'm just saying blue tape is the only way to go. It's OG and it works great. So what you do, I'm just going to do a little piece here. We're not going to get crazy with it. Because I'll tell you why we're not going to leave it on over the weekend here in a sec. And what you do is you want to get, this works on your baseboard and all that stuff. Is you get it right up close to the wall like that. Get it in there nice and tight. And just get it, just push it. Get your, you know, take your finger and just jam it in there. And get it good and tight. That way when you come in with your brush, you can, now don't slobber on it now. Blue tape is kind of like a life vest. You know. Yeah, it's gonna save your life, but if you knew how to swim, you know, it'd be a little bit better. So blue tape is not, you know, the end all be all. It's kind of like guardrails. So just kind of bring the paint down in there nice and easy like, and that way when you're done, you can just, yep, just peel it right off. And then when you are done, as soon as you're done rolling that wall, you got your two coats on, get it off. Don't let this stuff sit for days and days and days on anything, wood, drywall, especially these radiators. Like this boy right here is, this thing's warm. If we let that blue tape sit on there over the weekend, it'd be, it, it'd play hell trying to get that stuff off on Monday. So there's a little tip with the blue tape. It works really good. And as you can see, we don't have the end caps on here yet either, or our, our uh, outlet covers. This stuff, granted we painted this probably, I don't know, two hours ago. This paint's still gonna be really soft. If you go to try to put, especially these many metal caps, you go to try to put that on there, you're gonna scrape the hell out of your finish, and then you're gonna be back in there touching it up, and you're gonna be irritated. If you put your covers on too quick, believe it or not, them suckers are glued right on there. So if you ever try to pull that off, maybe to change it, whatever, it's gonna pull the paint on you. So give it, you know, give it a day. Just let her hang in there, heal it up. Let her heal up, come back to it, and then put all your stuff together. And speaking of, of, of taking things off the wall, if you want to do a good, you know, a decent professional job, like I said, you know, wife is on Pinterest, wants a room done, try to take down and take off the walls, take down off the ceiling, as many things that you're capable of doing. Unless it's gonna be like a day project to pull a light down, it would be beneficial to just pull it down, get it out of the way, that way, you're gonna use less tape, less time. You don't have to worry about running into anything. You can just cook and book. What else do we got going on here? Well, let's take a let's take a walk around. Just to give you an idea of how 
how much ceiling we had to cover here and how it's all connected. And as you can see, over in here, we got our cans are still pulled down. So what we did was we took that little cigar roller and we just scooted around that fella. And then we were able to take the big 18 and just keep it trucking. Right here is the doorbell dinger. We took that off the wall. That way we got nice, you know, there's a good finish around that. There's no cut lines. Because believe it or not, the more coats, coats of paint actually have a thickness. Not gonna lie. So let's say you're in an older house. This one's, you know, 90s. God knows how many coats of paint were on this wall. And let's say they never took this doorbell off, right? And they just painted around it and painted around it and painted around it. There's gonna, if you took it off, there's gonna be a bump here. Paint actually adds thickness. So like I said, if you can take it off, take it off. Moving on down the line. What else we got here? Turn the corner, and now we're back into the dining room, right where we, where we started. So like I told you, it's a big circle. Next week, hoping, fingers crossed, delivery is on time, uh, we're gonna have kitchen cabinets in here. So we got uppers here going across here, base cabinets, 16 foot island. So we got all these cans in here for it. And then on this side, these are going to be all uh, full height cabs, refrigerator. And over here, we're going to, over here next to the fireplace, which at some point the homeowner's got to do a redesign. We're not going to monkey too much with this. But we have some custom built ins that we're going to be putting together on either side of this. So, guys, really excited to get on that. We will definitely bring you guys along for that project. Uh, one more quick one, we're going to let you go for the weekend. I'm going to show you this here bathroom, which is what, you know. You call it a bathroom because that's what it is. But in my business, we're going to call this extra. And I'll tell you what, we get some lights going in here. So when we showed up, this thing was pretty much empty. Uh, the toilet was sitting there. Homeowner couldn't, you know, couldn't figure it out. It was rocking back and forth. Long story short. That drain was the, there's a flange in there. If any of y'all had one tore apart before, there's a metal flange that fastens to your subfloor. And then your bolts that you got there go into that metal flange. You put your wax ring in there. You cinch the toilet down. She's good and tight. That was all rotten and just, you know, a hot mess is what we like to call it. That vanity wasn't even close to being in there. It was basically just a wide open room with a toilet sitting there all monkeyed up. So about eight short hours later, my guy Tom come in here. We got a, uh, a special flange, got a rubber gasket, goes down inside the hole. Screwed that to the subfloor, mod the toilet, turn the water on, good to go. Homeowner picked out a new vanity, threw that in for him, hooked up supplies, drain, got that going. Here's a little tip when you're doing plumbing, folks. Now, like I said, this house is like a 90s, I think she told me it was like a 94, 95, 96. Your toilet shutoffs, your water shut off, right? That's something that's not monkeyed with that often. And the problem that they were having here and upstairs that we fixed for them was they used that shutoff because they wanted to replace the toilet. Because that shutoff was on for so long, and even on city water, especially out in the country with the hard water, that water just monkeys with those packings and those rubber gaskets that are in there. So when he shut that off, oh, well, guess what happened? It's not off all the way, it's leaky leakerson. So we had to replace that as well. So a little thing to know, if you're ever monkeying around, especially if you're out in the country or whatever, it really doesn't matter wherever you are. If you're replacing the toilet, replace everything. New supply line, new shut off, obviously new wax ring, Jumbo Johnny, the big thick ones. Don't use that stuff that comes with them. No bueno. One more quick thing in this bathroom I wanna point out. This fancy light up here that the homeowner picked out from, I don't know, Lowe's, Home Depot, you can do it, we won't help. Pull it out of the box, you know, it's supposed to have all the parts. Sure, sure, all the parts, yep. Mm -hmm. In today's world, I'll put it that way, uh, you're gonna get stuff with parts missing. You know, it's not gonna be like, oh yeah, it snapped together. You know, you get that fancy flooring that has the woman with the long fingernails and just, oh yeah, it just pops together. wrong -o! It doesn't work out that way sometimes. Sometimes you gotta get a little creative, adapt and overcome is what we used to say in the army. 
And I tell you what, Tom wanted to beat his head against the wall just for a stinking light, a van. He like, this should have taken 20 minutes. Took like an hour and 20 minutes this morning. Trying to figure out fasteners to get things and make it nice and level. So not everything is as easy as it looks. Just tell me. So that's kind of the scope of this project for this week. Like I said, next week, we're going to be hanging cabinets. Definitely going to bring you guys along. Uh, God willing, the crank don't rise. We might have a little bit different camera action going. Um, obviously, this video is not sponsored whatsoever. But, you know, if somebody knows somebody, you know, D-Wall, you know, red, you know, black and yellow. Somebody knows, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Just saying. But uh, that's pretty much the, the cap, you know, the cap on this project for this week. Uh, granted, it's Thursday, but we got other chickens to fry and whatnot. We'll be back in here Monday when the cabinets get delivered, and now we're going to be hitting our hearts. So you guys have a good weekend, and we will see you on the job next time.